horseshoe crabs. Millions of years ago, dinosaurs roamed the earth. It's hard to imagine that such strong, complex, and large animals could ever go extinct. However, 65 million years ago, they did, and in their place came the evolution and diversification of mammals. But today, a much older animal is still roaming earth. At almost 200 million years older than the dinosaurs are the horseshoe crabs. Nestled under the clade Arthropoda, clade Chelicerata, and clade Merostomata, these animals are still living in the shallow waters of the North American Atlantic coast. Feeding on worms and small mollusks at night, these animals can only be seen on the shoreline during spawning and mating seasons. Horseshoe crabs have four major stages in life. The egg stage, the larva stage, juvenile stage, and the adult stage, where the horseshoe crabs become mature enough to mate. Although their name contains the word crab in it, horseshoe crabs are not closely related to the true crabs at all. In fact, horseshoe crabs are closer related to spiders and scorpions than they are to the crab. Subphylum Chelicerata anatomy includes two tamata and six pairs of cephalothoracic appendages. The cephalothoracic appendages include one pair of chelicerae, one pair of pedipelps, and four pairs of walking legs. This clade has no mandibles or antenna and has book gills on their wide abdomen. They also possess a long tail called a telson and a hard horseshoe-shaped shell called a carapace. It has been shown that the hemolymph of horseshoe crabs can be harvested for medical purposes. Hemolymph is the blue blood that bathes the tissues in the horseshoe crab's open circulatory system. The blood is blue because the copper ion carries oxygen as opposed to iron like in humans. According to Anderson and others, the hemolymph is used as limulus amoebocyte lysate, or LAL, to detect pathogenic bacteria in pharmaceuticals, vaccines, and medical devices. Recent studies have been done to determine whether this harvesting process causes any major effects to the living horseshoe crab's rates of activity. This research included three study groups where each organism was kept in a tank that mimicked its natural habitat. The first of these three groups was the running wheel group, where each individual was put on a running wheel in their tank and their activity was recorded before and after the bleeding process. The second group was unrestrained, meaning the horseshoe crabs had full range of their tank at all times, and their activity was also measured before and after the harvesting. The final group was a communal tank, and it served as the control of the experiment. Although they are considered by many to be living fossils, Horseshoe crabs are still relevant to science and medicine. Their importance to the medical field means that they will most likely continue to be harvested for many years, despite negative physiological effects. Decreased activity levels, moving speed, and association with tidal rhythms all make horseshoe crabs more susceptible to predators in the weeks following hemolymph extraction. On top of the 20 to 30 percent mortality rate as a direct result of the procedure, weeks of dulled defenses most likely result in significantly higher mortality rates than reported. In order for continued harvest to be possible over the long term, medical researchers will need to find a way to mitigate these physiological effects before they result in further devastating population effects. Rebecca Anderson and company suggest a simple solution, imposing harvest limits. By controlling how many individuals may be taken from any one site, horseshoe crabs may be able to remain a sustainable source of life-saving hemolymph for years to come.